I was reading about atheism. Turns out it's a non-profit organization. Today, I'm going to recap a 2016 action war film called The Mountain 2. The movie begins with a group of ISIS terrorists about to execute a journalist. She was kidnapped by ISIS for covering a story about their atrocities against civilians. The terrorists want to execute her on camera for all the world to see so as to warn them not to fight back, but unbeknownst to them, Turkish special forces, consisting of seven people, are lurking to stop the execution. The Turkish special forces have disguised themselves as civilians and are waiting for the right moment to put their plan into action. Meanwhile, a sniper is hiding in an old building, ready to shoot from a distance of 800 meters. When the terrorist is about to kill the journalist, the sniper shoots him right in the head. Soon, the other members of the special team neutralize the remaining terrorist and rescue the journalist. Then we meet the seven members of the Turkish special forces, led by Lieutenant Colonel Musa, Mustafa, Auz, Bakir, and their sniper, Arif. They make sure the terrorists are dead and then destroy the camera. Next, we see two members of this team, Auz and Bekir, discussing their lives. Auz wonders if joining the special forces was the right choice, and his friend assures him that his parents would be proud of him. Back to present, the team prepares to return home and take the journalist with them to the helicopter landing site. She is outraged when she learns that her cameraman and other members of her team were not rescued. Musa tells her that they only followed the orders and now have to return to base. A rather long journey awaits them because the helicopter is 24 kilometers away from their current location. Moving ahead a few months later to the commander's office, initially, Musa didn't want to let the two of them participate in the mission, but Auz and Bekir managed to convince him. On the way, Bekir and Auz find something terrifying. There are the bodies of villagers who had been executed by ISIS about three hours earlier. These terrorists slaughter all citizens of different faiths, and even children are victims of their atrocities. Arif, the sniper, reports to Musa that he sees some terrorist coming in a car. Musa tells him to let them come, insinuating that they are ready to kill them. Going back in time, we see Lieutenant Colonel Musa recruiting soldiers for the special forces. He says that of the hundreds of soldiers who participated in the training, only 20 would be elected into the Turkish Special Forces and that they would face heavy and very dangerous missions. He warns them, although their sacrifices will be forgotten and their names will not be remembered as heroes, their main purpose remains to serve the country and provide protection from all threats. He then ends with a short motivational speech and recruits Auz and Bekir to the team. Back in the present, ISIS terrorists are closing in on their position. Lieutenant Colonel Musa and his troops, who are hiding, immediately order the artillery troops to kill the enemy with long-range fire. Subsequently, the sniper neutralizes the remaining terrorist in the car. After succeeding in killing the enemy, Musa receives a report from headquarters. The Kurdish area has been surrounded by ISIS. Therefore, Musa and his troops must leave immediately. Hearing this, the journalists suggest to Musa that they seek refuge in a safe location. Back in time to the heavy training the soldiers were subjected to, only the mentally and physically strongest could join the special forces. They had to prove every day, through various tests, that they were worthy of being there. In the present, the team finally arrives at their destination, which is the tomb of King Arcadia. Before resting, Musa orders the others to check the place thoroughly. At night, three soldiers sneak into the tomb of the King of Arcadia, and it turns out that the place is occupied by terrorists armed to the teeth. Initially, they kill the enemies silently, and then attempt to disable the explosives. Suddenly, one terrorist jumps on the soldier, but the other two are busy deactivating the explosives, so he has to fend for himself. Fortunately, they manage to deactivate them in time and save their comrade. In this way, they are able to secure the area and can now spend the night resting. The next day, Auz teaches the journalist how to use the gun and tells her what it means to be a soldier. Often he could not sleep at night, even when he was in his bed at home. Traumatic memories of the war haunted him during his sleep, and his girlfriend tried to calm him down. But he knew what he was getting into and never regretted becoming a soldier. Back in the present, Arif scores the area, 
and then reports to Musa that he sees terrorists holding civilians hostage, a man, a woman, and a child. Bekir observes the situation and says that Turkish troops should not ignore it. They decide to rescue the residents and approach the terrorist to launch a surprise attack, while the sniper will cover them. Under Musa's command, Arif immediately opens fire at a terrorist. Subsequently, the other part of the team kills the remaining enemies in the field. Suddenly, they find out about the existence of an enemy sniper, and Arif immediately neutralizes him. After eliminating the threat, the soldiers free all the hostages. One soldier tells Musa that they are not following the plan, so they should not be here. Musa points out to him that circumstances often change, and they must act in their own way. Oz finds an extremely injured man, and Musa immediately gives him medical attention. The man says he is a police captain in the Kurdish region, and reveals that ISIS killed 80 of his men, leaving him alone. The policeman begs Musa to end his suffering, and the lieutenant colonel does so. Afterwards, they continue their journey with two civilians, a boy and a girl. As they rest, Arif reports that not far from there is the village where the civilians they rescued live. Arif, who is monitoring the village, tells Musa that it appears to be safe from ISIS terrorists. He adds that there is a landing zone for helicopters not far from the village, so they should return to the military base tomorrow morning. Later, they arrive at the village with great vigilance and make sure there are no terrorists around. The children finally return to their mother's arms. Meanwhile, the village chief greets Musa and introduces him to the only remaining man named Boron. Boron reveals that the current villagers number only 40, 25 adults, and 15 children. Then he invites them to rest at his home. Soon after, the command center contacts Musa and informs him that terrorist forces have destroyed the Iraqi army and that Kurds from the main ISIS battalion will arrive in the village tomorrow afternoon. The team is ordered to leave the village to reach the assembly site at dawn. Boron, after hearing this, can only surrender to the fate of his village and tell them to go. The journalist tries to stop Musa's troops from leaving and begs them to protect the village because ISIS terrorists will kill all the villagers. However, Musa refuses because their main mission is to save the journalist and not to protect the villagers. For Musa, the success of the mission is critical to the safety of its members, but she says the duty of the army should be to protect the weaker citizens. The journalist takes a child and challenges Musa to tell her that he is unable to save her, but he remains silent. Later, Oz approaches Musa and tells him that they have a duty to help these innocent people. Nevertheless, Musa says that sometimes they cannot control things around them. Oz says that if they have to obey orders from their superiors, they should leave here, but if they still have a conscience, they certainly would not have the courage to let the villagers be brutally slaughtered by terrorists. So, Musa decides to save these poor people, evacuating them together with the journalist. The next morning, a helicopter from the base flies in to pick up the journalist and the special team. Upon arrival at the landing site, Musa brings the journalist and all the villagers of Karda. Initially, they put all the children on board, and Musa tells the journalist that the special team will stay here to protect the remaining villagers. She is initially confused and doesn't want to leave them, but Musa says his main mission is to save her and ask her to get on the helicopter. He then gives her a letter and asks to read it once she arrives at the base. He informs the military base that he stayed on the battlefield voluntarily, as did the other soldiers. He asked for another helicopter, but is told that the area is full of terrorists, so it is too risky. Thus, he says they must eliminate the threat first, and then they will be rescued. Before fighting, they raise the Turkish flag to increase their patriotic spirit. Then they gather to plan a strategy to combat the onslaught of enemies. They then plant several bombs in areas where ISIS troops are likely to pass. Faisal divides his troops into several teams. Musa orders Arif to position himself on top of the mosque tower, where there is perfect visibility, while Boron is assigned to protect the sniper. While Musa and the others fight on the front lines, another soldier is assigned to the center line. But they need another person in charge of transporting ammunition, so a woman named Nabat offers to help them. Next, they hide the villagers in a safe place. While they wait for the enemies to arrive, each tells different stories about their respective lives. From the top of the tower, 
RF spots the arrival of enemy troops, totaling about 200 people, eight tactical vehicles, and an American-made tank. The team quickly rushes to their respective positions. When the ISIS troops arrive at the location of the bomb, Musa detonates it, killing dozens of enemies. Subsequently, the soldiers began killing the surviving terrorist. Being attacked from various directions, the team is forced to retreat to the central line. Mustafa is trying to stop the enemy's attack on the front line, but unfortunately he is hit and captured. Before being executed by the enemies, Mustafa asks Arif to treat his son as his own. Mustafa, who wants to fight to the last drop of blood, blows up along with the terrorist. The soldiers continue getting attacked by ISIS forces and decide to retreat to their last defensive position. There, they try to survive with their remaining ammunition, but as they make their way to the last stronghold, a soldier, named Azref, is shot by an enemy sniper. Dying, Azref orders Arif to return enemy fire using his body as a shield. Although hesitant, Arif gets into position and successfully eliminates the enemy sniper. The battle is still going on, and in the last fortress, they continue to hold out until they run out of ammunition. An ISIS member starts running toward the last position with a bomb on his body. Musa spots the bomb and tries to stop him, but unfortunately, he is hit by another terrorist. Musa's fall ends the battle, and Turkish special forces finally succeed in eliminating the main ISIS battalion. In the meantime, the rescue helicopter arrives at the base, and the journalist reads the letter that Musa had delivered to her. In the letter, he confesses that if his daughter were still alive, he would have wanted her to be as brave and kind as the journalist. Musa advised all of them to continue to take the oath of allegiance to the homeland and to prioritize the protection of civilians. Several helicopters arrive to pick them up and finally take them home. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.